morning from Second Baptist. It's today is the 22nd of July. It's Wednesday. And uh, I just want to share just a few minutes of uh, scripture text and some, some talk. But first of all, I want to mention that this weekend we are going to be recording. Uh, our three congregations are going to come together once again um, virtually. Our three pastors, uh, Pastor Mike from Belmont, Pastor Joy from First Baptist, and myself, Pastor Steve. And we're going to be recording uh, this weekend uh, from, and just to give you the heads up, it's Matthew 13, 31 through 33, and uh, verses 44 through 52. It's six different parables, and how we're going to handle six different parables, I'm not quite sure yet, but I hope that you'll come around and find out. Uh, these, these have been fun for us to come together as we have over the last three months. And we hope to continue to do so on and off. Uh, we're not gonna probably do it every week because we do have busy schedules, but we are gonna try to come together at least a couple times a month, uh, maybe three times a month and, and share our thoughts on particular passages of scripture. Today, I wanna, um, I wanna just ask you a question. Do you ever complain to God? Uh, I'm, I'm sure you do. If you're honest with yourself, you do complain to God. Some people complain more than others. Um, Sometimes we're in a constant uh, barrage of complaints to God about this thing or that thing. And, and it's not unusual, not uncommon. And I don't think it's wrong because I think God's shoulders are big enough to be able to take our complaints and our sorrows and all of the grief that we have to share. But I want to share a psalm today. And uh, I think it was common throughout the psalms to... Um, to uh, for the psalmist to issue their complaints against God and um, and and so I, I guess we maybe call them ponderings as I read this I, it seems like the psalmist is pondering some of the things of life and trying to figure out uh, what exactly to do and um, in this case I think he's thinking about the wicked he's saying and you know my life is, I'm kind of going through some rough times right now, but then I look at the wicked. I, think, I look at the people that, that seem to hate God and their lives are going great. Now, why is that? It almost sounds like the, the book of Job as, as we read that. And so I want to share these, this. I'm going to read the first four verses and then I'm going to read the last four verses and I'm going to skip everything in between because it's, it's just for the sake of time. He says, why, Lord, do you stand far off? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? In his arrogance, the wicked man hunts down the weak who are caught in the schemes he devises. He boasts about the cravings of his heart. He blesses the greedy and reviles the Lord. In his pride, the wicked man does not seek him. In all his thought, there is no room for God. Now the last four verses. But you, God, see the trouble of the afflicted. You consider their grief and take it in hand. The victims commit themselves to you. You are the helper of the fatherless. Break the arm of the wicked man. Call the evildoer to account for his wickedness that would not otherwise be found. The Lord is king forever and ever. The nations will perish from his land. I think it's good for us to read passages of scripture like that every once in a while and to see, um, first of all, how we interact with God, how we can interact with God, but also the fact that the, the psalmist or, the, or whether it's the psalmist or whether it's Job or whoever it is, they always come back to the premise that God is sovereign, that God is generous, that God is loving, that God is, is grace in every way. And, and that's a good reminder to us as we're going through, you've probably been doing some ponderings of your own lately. God, what is this going on around us? Why, does, why doesn't it end? Why can't we come back together fully as a congregation and do the things that we've always done? Why can't I go camping? Why can't I, I go into stores without wearing a mask? And all these things that we're probably feeling sorry for ourselves and we're wondering why is this happening? And then we begin to look around and we begin to complain about other people and what they're doing. Oh, that person over there isn't wearing a mask or that person over there isn't isolating or self-distancing and so on. And so we begin to look at others and, 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 and begin to complain about those other people. And then we come back to the reality in the end that, you know what, all of this is in God's hands. It's not, it's not ours to determine. God has already predetermined it. I'm not suggesting we'd be careless. 
I'm just suggesting we be, we, we remember who's in charge of all these things, that God is certainly in charge. May you have a blessed day today. God loves you. Go in God's peace.